Howdy! My name is Nonat, and I love giving and receiving TTRPG advice. But I want to make sure we're on the same page before I get any farther into this video. Just so we're clear, this is TTRPG advice. This is not. This is TTRPG advice. This is not. Now that we're all on the same page, I saw something really interesting pop up on my Twitter today. It's very, very rare that I see something on that hell site that makes me go, I should make a video about that. But it happened, and I'm really excited to. It's mainly because I love talking about positive, cool content and being a positive, cool force any way I can. So seeing a positive, cool post makes me happy, and I want to share it with you and give my thoughts and opinions on everything it says, along with the original post that it was replying to. So... Let's get into it after I say thank you so much to all of the members of the Known At Ones Patreon. Everybody on this list helps support me and the channel and keeps more and more content coming your way. It's because of all those amazing supporters that I've been able to afford doing four or five videos every single week for the past month and a half, and I don't plan on stopping that anytime soon. If you would like to support me just like them, there is a link in the description that'll take you to the Known At Ones Patreon page where you can pledge for $10 a month and get your name on that awesome list alongside all of those incredible people. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. Let's talk about this post. So before we get into the proper post, we do need to take a look at the post that it is in response to. Quote, Honestly, I think we should put an embargo on all GMing advice until we have a solid, extensive network of advice on how to be a better player. I think there's a lot of hyperbole and exaggeration here, but I don't disagree with the sentiment. We don't get as much player advice as we do GM advice. And when we do get player advice, it's just how to build a stronger character, not how to make the game better for everybody. GMs are asked to do more and more to make their worlds more inviting, but a lot of players won't even take their shoes off at the door. This, to me, reads as somebody who's had really bad experiences with players. In my experience with my friends, we all give as much as we're comfortable. We're all there to have fun with each other, and obviously, yes, the GM has to put in a little bit more work playing multiple characters and building a world, but if you're looking at it and keeping tabs on what everybody is doing individually, I think you're playing wrong. It's not wrong to expect people to give and be invested in the game, but it is wrong to get mad at them for it if you're not communicating with them about it. At the end of the day, here's your big piece of advice that I give at least every two weeks on this channel. Talk to your players. Talk to your table. Make sure everybody is on the same page. Hell, just two days ago, our GM for our Pathfinder 2E campaign messaged the group chat saying, Hey, how's everyone feeling about the lethality of the campaign? Do we want to increase it, decrease it, keep it where it's at? What are you all thinking? They said, I know you love your characters, and I don't want to do anything that would make you uncomfortable for them. And yeah, most of us were like, yeah, we're fine with whatever. It's your campaign. Do what you want. We're comfortable with high or low lethality. And one of our players was like, hey, I like the lethality, but toning it down just a little bit so that not every session is completely lethal would be great so we can just enjoy our characters and the world. And we were all like, yeah. Cool, we love that. We communicated, we talked, we settled on something, and we haven't seen how it's going to be implemented in the campaign going forward, but the fact is, we opened that communication, and we talked, and the campaign is going to be even better for it. So that's just my two cents, is everything at the end of the day comes down to communication between players. And not just between players and GM, but between players and players. You know, I constantly talk to my fellow players when I'm a player in a campaign, in like DMs and in private and whatnot, to talk about our characters. In my Kingmaker campaign, I was talking to the other gnome about the future of our characters, and we're talking like, ooh, I could kind of see them ending up together, but I could also see them kind of killing each other, and that would be funny too. And I love communication like that. Communicate with each other. We're here to play the game. Make sure everyone's playing the same game. <laughs> okay, enough of me talking about my own experiences because I love doing that and I'll do it for hours. Let's get into the post itself because they retweeted this original post with their top player tips. And I love all three of them to the point where I want to expand upon them for you. This was posted by at MellyDM on Twitter. So if you use Twitter, go give them a follow. They've got really decent... This is the only post I've ever seen from them, but they've got a really good take here and I highly agree with it. Starting right off the bat, they have such a banger with grab onto hooks, find a reason to do so. I love that they don't just write, go along with the story. That's not what they're saying at all. What they are saying is the DM is going to hold dozens of little tiny plot hooks in front of you. Find a reason 
for your character to be invested. And if you can't find one, then at the end of the session, before the next session, talk to your GM, you know? Engage in what is being presented. Yes, it is the GM's responsibility, quote unquote, to make a story that the players will want to latch onto, but it is also your responsibility as a player in this shared storytelling table to latch on and follow the hook. How boring would Lord of the Rings be if Frodo said, nah fam, I'm good. You'll also be surprised just how quickly you will latch onto the story once you've given your character a reason to. You know, if there's an NPC asking for help, maybe you're the chaotic neutral rogue. Try to extort some money out of them. You know, you don't even have to be a good person in this situation. Find your character's reason to latch on to plot hooks. And once you have that first reason and you're along for the ride, it is amazing how easy and fun it is to just let the, the river, the current of that adventure from that plot hook, reel you in. It's a metaphor, plot hook, like a fishing rod, reels you, you become the story. If you just don't latch on to things because you don't think your character will be interested in it, you're going to miss out on a lot, and you're going to make interacting with the rest of your party and the game really difficult. So look for that reason to come along. It doesn't even need to be that first session. Maybe your character just says, let's see where this goes. There could be potential in this. Sometimes that's enough. And at the end of the day, it's a nice courtesy to your GM to say, All right, thank you, good sir. I do see the quest listing for the kobold extermination. I shall take on forthwith with mine compatriots, even though it is below mine station. Because you never know where it's going to lead, and you as the player can trust in the GM that they have something planned that will be interesting. This second one is huge and really, really hard to do, especially as a new player or a player who may have trouble focusing. Like myself, I have pretty severe focusing issues. I zone out constantly during games to the point where I usually need to be fidgeting with something while I'm playing. If I'm playing online, I might like mute my microphone and then the entire time I'm just doing this the entire session because I need to do something, or I'll load up like a mindless game like Cookie Clicker or some junk like that to just click while I'm playing. It keeps my body and part of my mind busy while I'm also focusing on the session. Now that I've completely lost train of thought, be excited and engaged in scenes you're not involved in. Just because your character is not participating doesn't mean you shouldn't be engaged, doesn't mean you shouldn't be listening. I can tell you it's awkward, as someone who zones out too much, when an ally has a really big conversation, a big plot-driving conversation that I don't happen to be there for. So me, the player, I zone out, I do whatever, I check my phone or Twitter because I'm terrible sometimes, and boom, they walk back to the party saying... I repeat what I just learned to my allies, and I'm like, I wasn't listening to what you just learned, and now I'm too embarrassed to ask you to say it again, and it's awkward. So, along with just information retention for paying attention, we're there together. This is everybody's story. No matter what happens, no matter how insignificant it is, just because the kobold rogue ran off and stole a hat from the haberdasher, it will still involve you in some way. You're part of the party. I'm gonna say something here that might hurt some people's feelings, but guess what? You're not the main character. <laughs> the party is. The party as a collective is the main character. There's not a single main character among you, at least there shouldn't be in my opinion. So when something is happening to one of you, it affects all of you and you should all be present for it. And you'll find the more you're present for your allies' situations, the more your character has to work with and can bring back up and can reference and can banter with your ally in a new way with new information because you're spending time together in the game world and learning things about each other, both in character and out of character and bantering with your fellow player characters is one of the best parts of these games. And the more you know and are aware of what that character is going through, the more you can banter and build your relationship dynamics. And it's awesome. And as a usual GM, those are my favorite moments too. Even if I'm not a player character, when I can sit back and just watch my players talk in character, that's when I know I'm running a successful session because my players are so immersed in the world and what's going on between them, they don't even need me as the GM in that moment to describe anything. They are in character, they are immersed, and we are all having an amazing time.
And let's bring it to the third, possibly the most important tip here, depending on who you're talking to. Find the fun in consequences. Don't be sour when things don't work out, play into it, and then celebrate when things go well. I love rolling that once. Okay, pitch horse down, pitch horse down, it's just a username, okay, okay. I love failing. Especially in Pathfinder 2e, I love critical failing, especially on dumb things. I am a master athletics kineticist. You know what happened when I tried to climb a 20-foot wall? I rolled a one and fell. <laughs> and we laughed for like 10 minutes. Like it meant absolutely nothing to the plot. I loved it. I found it hilarious. When I fail in combat, I think it's rad. I once used the Earth Kineticist Tremor ability and then caused a giant area effect centered on myself. I'm like, I'm a kineticist. I'm constitution based. I can auto crit succeed a normal fortitude save. And then I rolled a two. And then I almost killed myself. I had 77 hit points and I did 76 damage to myself. <laughs> it was great. Just because your character failed doesn't mean what's happening is bad. Enjoy your failures. You are not trying to win. I can't say that enough. I say that constantly. Whether it's D&D, Pathfinder, Call of Cthulhu, Shadowrun, Vampire the Masquerade, you're not trying to win. You and your group are trying to tell a memorable story with some random chance throw in. When you sit down, especially to a D20 based system session, you are voluntarily signing a contract that says, I am okay with the dice screwing me over. Because that is the game. Because for every time the dice screw you over, the dice will let you succeed at something you should have no chance of doing. Like when my athletics kineticist rolled a 41 to open a portcullis that would have trapped us inside of a trap last night. So don't feel dejected. Just because your character failed at something, doesn't mean you failed at something. And this is absolutely an understandable reaction. A lot of us project ourselves onto our characters. Our characters immerse us, and that line between player and character can get blurry, especially for more emotional, roleplay heavy players. So just whenever something wrong happens, just think to yourself, just because my character failed doesn't mean I failed. Nobody at the table is going to get mad at me for rolling a bad math rock. You're okay. The story's okay. And even if your character dies, indulge yourself in what could potentially be the in-game character's sorrow. Or if they die in a ridiculous, funny way, enjoy the poetic irony, maybe. Or if they saved the party, indulge in that heroic sacrifice, you know? Just because things didn't go the way you planned doesn't mean they're bad. And if you enjoy what's going on, chances are the people around you will too. And vice versa. If you zone out and hate what's going on and feel terrible about what your character can and can't do because the dice aren't nice to you, everyone else is going to feel that energy and it's going to fill the table. You are one coalition. Like I said, the party is the main character. And in that same vein, your group of people playing the game are all the ones in control of who does and doesn't have a good time. One bad egg can spoil the bunch. And that's true of campaigns as well. Don't be a bad egg, y'all. They stinky. So those are my opinions and expansions on three phenomenal player tips. There's plenty more out there that are very, very focused on the social aspect of gaming, boundaries, what to and not to do, unspoken rules, all of that. If that's something you would like to hear me talk about, I would love to expand this video into a few more to cover my own top player tips because I think they're super important and much like the original post, I don't think they're talked about enough. A few creators have made some videos on player tips, but there's so much more advice out there for GMs than there is for players. And I think we could stand to fix that. But for now, that's all for me. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching. And until next time, no Nat Ones.